I just want to start this video off by asking a question. Were you really confused at the end of 1BR? Why did she smile? Why did she clench her fist? Why did she laugh? Why did all the alarms go off? Why did she run? And what was that creepy book about? What does it all mean? Well, I did some research and some thinking and I think I've wrapped my head around this thing. I'm going to let you know and I'll go through this using three themes. One, our main character Sarah and her independence. Two, Charles E. Ellerby and his cult. This includes the Synanon cult, that book, the power of community, and the brand that they put behind people's ears in this movie. And three, Los Angeles and the perfect life that it presents. And then in the end, of course, I'll explain how it all ties into that weird ass ending. And if you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment. It helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so let's rewind this thing back for a bit of context. All right, so theme number one, Sarah's independence. This theme is the most simple. Number two and number three get much more deep and creepy. A major issue in this movie is that Sarah's not self-sufficient and can't take control of her life. Her dad is worried that she won't be able to be safe and secure alone in LA. She can't say no to unpaid overtime with her boss. And greatest of all, she couldn't tell her sick mother on her deathbed that her crazy ass dad who freaking slaps his daughter cheated on this dying woman. She totally looks up to Lisa who seems to have complete independence and control over her life. I'm gonna get back to Lisa and that's all I have to say for now, but just keep this theme in mind. All right, theme number two. The Synanon cult is a real cult, which began in the 1950s located in California, the same state as this apartment complex in this movie. It was founded by a man named Charles D. Diedrich, extremely similar to the movie's version, Charles D. Ellerby. You see his name when you look at the cover of that creepy book in the movie, The Power of Community. Synanon was also seen as the utopian community, which I think inspires the book's title in this movie. The Synanon cult was originally a drug rehabilitation program. It started successfully curing a lot of people until the late 60s when it evolved into a church of Synanon. Basically a creepy ass cult where they do really creepy rehab tactics. And these tactics relate heavily to what the apartment members in the movie go through to become members. Their most popular practice was this exercise called the game where they keep you for 72 hours and you have to keep telling truths about yourself. And eventually you get criticized for your imperfections. They basically do this in the movie when Sarah is stuck in the room for days and then she has to do this lie to detector test until they believe she's a loyal member of the cult. A big rule for Synanon as well was that workers had to stay trapped within the community throughout the beginning and over time they were allowed to venture further and further away. Which makes sense because Sarah became a member in the complex, had to stay in that room, then could walk around the complex, then eventually was on the streets in the city. And yes, the streets of the city are also a part of the cult, but I'll get into more of that at the end of the video. That brand that Sarah gets behind her ears when she's officially verified as a member, it seems to be the movie's version of the Synanon cult symbol. Synanon also eventually began its own schools, which explains the kids learning in that video in the movie. And unfortunately, in 1991, this cult became a very violent cult, committing a series of violent crimes, which is similar to how this movie unfolds. They start peaceful and successful, then they end up doing these weird practices, and then it becomes a freaking bloodbath. It also seems like the director is sneakily saying LA is the new Synanon cult, which brings me to theme number three. Okay, theme number three, LA and the perfect life. I think this director, David Marmer, is saying that LA is the future of this Synanon cult and here's why. Certain members of the Synanon program ended up improving on the success of their artistic careers which made Synanon look really appealing. In LA people have dreams of this ideal life just like that apartment complex. It looks great from the outside. The people are nice and friendly and helpful. The weather is always perfect but once you get in it's way different and eventually they get lost in it until you're strong enough like Sarah to snap out of this fantasy and realize that what the hell am I doing? I'm torturing myself to hold on to this dream and I'm hypnotized to think everything must be perfect. In the movie Sarah has a dream of being a costume designer, as many people in Los Angeles do. That's why the apartment members force her to let go of everything, her cat, her father, her best friend, but the only thing they let her keep is her sewing machine. They want her to hold on to that big LA dream, that hope for a perfect life, and let go of all that stuff you've had before because you don't need it and your life is going to get way better. Even Lisa falls into the LA dream as a 38 year old who wants to be a movie star and pays the ultimate price. And so, to tie this all together, at the end of the movie, Sarah is saved by the creepy glasses guy who we totally thought was brainwashed, which proves that not everyone is brainwashed by this lifestyle and are only participating because they feel like they should because everyone else is doing it. Something Californians do all the time. Sarah looks up at the symbol on the sign of another apartment complex and realizes, holy shit, the whole city is part of this cult. Los Angeles is the new version of Synanon and she is still under surveillance. But as you can see, she smiles and laughs and clenches her fists, meaning she has finally taken control of her life and has found her independence. It's the completion of her character arc and now she has decided I'm gonna escape this deadly cult-like game we call the American Dream. She's like, I don't need any of what the 
this city is promising me and she runs into the distance in search of her true purpose. All right, that's my analysis. Obviously there are certain areas where I'm theorizing, but there are other areas where I'm pretty sure I got it. But please let me know in the comments what your theories are if you have any. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want more videos like this and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. See you guys.